In this session, we'll be discussing about one important class of fungus, which is basidiomycetes. Now, when you talk about basidiomycetes, they are also called club fungi. Remember, they are common names because based upon the common names, they are also asked. Like the, the time I was talking about, you were having sec fungi, which were ascomycetes. Like the same way, the basidiomycetes, they are called club fungi. And remember, they are the most advanced and most commonly seen fungi. You must have seen mushrooms. So mushrooms are one among the members of what you call basidiomycetes. There are no, no sex organ. This is what I've told you. Like they don't have sex organ. But that doesn't mean they don't look forward for sexual reproduction. The sexual reproduction is present in them. Maybe with the help of somatogamy. In somatogamy, the somatic cells only will be coming and fusing. Now when you talk about sexual reproduction, it can be, I've told you, it can be somatogamy or it can be spermatization. So both of these methods I've already told you the time we were talking about sexual reproduction methods. So they basically reproduce sexually with the help of somatogamy or spermatization. Now what happens, most of the members are heterothelic. Now what is heterothelic and homothelic? Homothelic means one strain will be having both of the gametes. But here what would happen, there are two different particular strain will be coming and they will be fusing. So the, the, the one, one will be working as male, another will be working as female. So they are called heterothelic because the gametes are coming from different thali. When you talk about karyogamy and meiosis, it occurs in basidium and that produces basidiospores. If you remember, there was a fruiting body called ascocarp where you had the ascus and in the ascus karyogamy and meiosis was happening and because of that the spores were coming, those were called ascospores. So similarly you have a fruiting body called basidiocarp here. Basidiocarp will be having a structure called basidium. On to the basidium, you will have the meiosis taking place and will be releasing you basidiospores. There are dolipore septa, very important thing. Now, what is dolipore septa? If you remember, I've told you that, uh, like, you know, there are, let's suppose these are what you call the septa between the hyphae. And these septa are not continuous, they have the pores, as comacetes were having the simple pores. Their pores are barrel shaped, remember the shape? They are barrel shaped and they are called dolipore but not in the member of rust and smut. Rust and smut are the members of basidiomycetes. Those don't show you dolipore septa. All other basidiomycetes will be showing you dolipore septa. When you talk about, they have clamp connection. Now the clamp connection are required for the proper distribution of dicarion. Dicarion was the stage where, you, if you know this N plus N were fused. So, I mean, what you call the plasm is fused, the cytoplasm is fused, the nuclei are still not fused. And that is one among the major stage of basidiomycetes member that most of the basidiomycetes member remain in this particular stage, which is called dicarion stage. The nuclei are not yet fused, but what is fused is cytoplasm. So, for that, you require the connections, those are present in particular septa. These are called clamp connections. Now, when you look forward for the members, you have one important member called smut and rust. I've told you rust and smut, right? They don't have dolipore septa. So in smut, you will have ustilajo. And ustilajo, they basically cause the diseases in corn and wheat. When you talk about paxenia, which is very important member of rust, basidiomycetes member, it causes the disease on wheat. You will have to also understand about the life cycle of paxenia. This I'll be teaching you next. So now these are the members and agaricales are the edible mushroom. When you talk about what we eat, the mushroom what we eat is agaricus bisporus or agaricus compastris. So agaricus bisporus or agaricus what you call compastris, they belong to agaricales and agaricales are edible mushroom. But remember, mushrooms are not always edible. There are poisonous mushrooms also. We have toadstool and toadstool are the mushroom. Those are always poisonous. And most of the times it has been reported in the cases that toadstools are being consumed by the uh, what you call the people and that has become the deadly poison to those people those have consumed them one important mushroom i mean what, what you call the basidiomycetes member it's called amantia which is called caesar's mushroom if you know caesar this is called this is related with caesar so this is called caesar's mushroom you have ganoderma ganoderma what does it do it forms what you call shelf like structures over the trees, which is also called shelf fungi. One important thing I'll tell you about Ganoderma, it can decompose lignin. Now lignin is one among the components of wood. And remember, lignin is mostly not degraded by most of the bacteria and other fungi. 
who degrades it is canoderma that forms a shelf and it can degrade what you call that particular leg and then even if the tree is standing the tree is not even like the wood are not fallen but even if on the standing tree they can degrade the woods and there are some figures which are showing you there are some edible fungi there are some poisonous fungi you can look forward so they almost look similar but there are differences there are poisons produced in this particular poisonous fungi so you should be careful like the time you're consuming some of the fungi most of the fungi what we eat is agaricase they belong to agaricase but more of, most of the what you call poisonous fungi what we don't eat are toads tool actually so in the next session we'll be starting with the last class of fungi which is deuteromycetes